everyone. Welcome to this episode of our Dollhouse Miniature Crafting Series. Today we're going to be working on a Victorian dresser set in 1 12th scale and we're going to be using the Chrisenbaum kit number 2210. Chrisenbaum manufactures a number of miniature accessory kits as well as some very nice furniture kits. I'm a huge fan of the Chrisenbaum kits. They're affordable, the detail is excellent, and they are very true to one inch scale. So this is what you're going to find in your envelope. You're going to have a sprue of all of the pieces attached. Don't be alarmed if there's any of the pieces that are loose in the envelope. Sometimes during shipping they do come loose. That won't affect your finished product. You're also going to have an oval mirror material for our hand mirror. We can set that aside for right now. Some of the products you're going to need for today's project are pretty basic. You're going to choose a nail polish. I like to use the Pearl Tone nail polishes. I think they give a very nice finish on this polystyrene. If you go lightly with them, they give the appearance of the old Bakelite pieces that women in the 1930s used to have on their dresser sets. You're going to need a gold and a silver paint pen, an X-Acto knife if you have any large pieces that need trimmed off. Some people like to work with tweezers. You're going to need an emery board and a fine paintbrush as well as white craft paint and our regular tacky glue. Okay, we're going to start with our polish. Give it a little shake. We're simply going to brush a light coat of the polish on each one of our pieces. You'll see that the pieces take this nail polish very nicely. Don't forget to get your edges. Some paints react with the polystyrene and will actually melt it. Nail polish maintains its shimmer and keeps the piece true to itself. Another type of paint you can use on these polystyrene kits is the Krylon spray paint designed for plastic. That gives it a nice solid finish. For example, if you were doing something more with a holiday theme and you wanted to use a flat red or a flat black for Halloween, this set works really nicely if you're doing a witch's vanity. It has that Victorian borders on the gothic type look. Okay, so we're going to polish each piece lightly. You can determine whether or not you want a second coat. I don't like to go too heavy with the nail polish. I like the bone color of the plastic shining through. It gives it a more authentic look. I just want to show you on these smaller pieces which are our cuticle pusher, our nail file, and our button hook, it's only necessary to paint the handle of the piece. We're actually going to use our silver paint pen to tip them where the metal would be. Don't forget to get both sides. And the other piece that requires a little extra attention is the comb. Carefully spin the extra little sprue off. We're going to go back and sand that in a few minutes. And then simply do the spine of your comb as well as the top tooth and the bottom tooth. We're going to go back in and paint our teeth of our comb. Okay, so I want you to go ahead and I want you to polish each piece. I have one finished here so that we can move on to the next step. As you can see, each one of these pieces has been polished. They have a very nice shimmer to them. Again, straighten up any of your little metal tips that may need straightened up a bit. And the next thing we're going to do is add our silver to these three tips to give it a metal appearance. And a basic paint pen works great for this step. 
keeping the handles with our nail polish finish, just brush the top and bottom with your silver paint pen. It's probably a little difficult to see because this work mat is gray, but when you do it, you'll notice it gives it a very nice shine, very nice metal look to it. All right, that was simple enough. Next, we're going to use our gold paint pen. This is just going to add a slight bit of elegant detail to the pieces. On your dresser set, you'll have a hair receiver and you will have a powder box. And on each one of those lids, there's a very delicate lace edge. And if you barely touch your gold paint pen to that edge, it'll give it a nice, elegant gold edge. I'll go ahead and do both of these. If you can see it just adds a tiny bit of elegance to it. There we go. We're going to go back and really embellish this set at the very end, and I'll show you in a minute what product we're going to use for that. I'm gonna push this one aside a little. Give myself some room for my paint pen. There we go. Perfect. All right, the last bit of paint detailing we wanna do is with our white craft paint. We're going to paint the teeth of the comb and the bristles of our hairbrush. You wanna go very lightly with the craft paint, especially with the comb. You don't wanna fill the teeth in. So use a very fine detail brush. I like these little cornel brushes. They have a nice handle to hold onto, but the bristles are very nice. Just go in and grab those teeth. It's as simple as that. Go as delicately as you can. There we go. If it fills in any of the teeth a little too heavily than you like, just give a little blow on it and it'll separate those teeth. And you want to do the bristles of the brush and there's actually a texture on it so you want to brush very lightly so you maintain that texture so it looks like the bristled brushes. Make sure you go down the sides. That detailing is great. Again I'm going to move my pieces over so I can get in there. Chris and Bunk Company started in the early 70s by a gal named Judy Berman. She wanted to come out with some nicely priced 112 scale miniature pieces that every collector could have. At that point miniatures were fairly exclusive now with so many wonderful manufacturing techniques, it's affordable for everyone. She really was the first one responsible for making a line of dollhouse miniatures that everyone could craft. Okay, I have this one ready to go. We have all of our gold trim painted. Everything is polished. We have our pieces with our silver tips. We have our comb teeth painted white and we have our brush, our brush bristles painted white. The next thing we're going to do is gently remove each piece from the sprue. Plastic can sometimes stretch if you pull it too hard or you twist it too hard and it'll leave an exaggerated mark. So very carefully, gently spin your pieces around rather than give them a pull 
or a tug. Just gently remove each one. We have a hair receiver. Here's our powder box. We have two picture frames. These are standing picture frames. You could use miniature photographs, any scrapbooking paper design, any pictures cut out of magazines to simply glue in place. This is our hand mirror. And don't forget we have that oval mirror material that will glue into that. We have our tray, our comb, our brush, our painted bristles, we have a buffer, and we have a shoehorn. Then we have our three very delicate pieces. I want you to put your finger underneath, place your thumb on it, and rock it back and forth. And eventually, they'll give. You can discard your sprue, and now it's easier to spin each piece and discard your extra bit of plastic. Now if one of your delicate pieces aren't quite straight, the warmth of your fingers will make the plastic a little bit more pliable and you can easily mold it right back into place. That's better. Now is when you're going to need your emery board. Emery boards are great tools in dollhouse miniature making. I always like to use the softer side of the emery board, however. If you use the side that's too rough, sometimes you can actually distort the shape and take too much away from each piece. So using the very light side, you're going to feel that there's a nub on each piece. And what we want to do is gently remove that. Go slow, keep feeling it, seeing how much more you need to take off, and finish each piece. There we go. And after you have all of your pieces sanded, all right, now that we have every piece sanded, all of our sharp little nubs are gone, we are going to take our hand mirror, our hairbrush, our two jars, our little pieces, and the tray. And before we embellish them, we're going to glue the parts together it'll make it somewhat easier. So using your tacky glue and a toothpick, I'm going to turn your hand mirror over and you're going to just put the tiniest of dots of white tacky glue and snap your mirror in place. That's so charming. On your hairbrush, when you turn it over you're going to realize there's a raised knob and that's where you're going to place your dab of glue and again snap your bristles into place and just in fear of losing a piece we're going to glue our three tiny pieces to our tray so three dots of glue and simply Lay your pieces down on your tray. There we go. And then we're going to take a dot of glue and a dot of glue and put our lids on our jars. You can leave them loose or you could fill them. with a resin material, a powder. There we go. All right. So now we have all of our pieces ready to embellish. This is where the fun part comes in. We're going to be using a product called Bunka. Bunka is a cording material that many miniaturists used in fabric crafts. They use it as upholstery cording. They use it in 
dress making, um, hats. It's just a very versatile cording. I've chosen lavender for the flowers and green for the leaves. I want to show you how easy it is to make tiny rosettes with this cording. What you're going to do is you're going to take your fingernail at the very tip and just keep pulling at it until you get, be patient, until you get a loose fuzzy edge and then very gently pull it. Do you see how that scrunches up? When I teach children's classes, they really have fun accordioning the cording out. Likewise, we're going to do the same with the green. Here I have a piece that's already been pulled. And then you're going to take little tiny snippets. Itty bitty. enough to start with. Oops. Oops. Lots of oops in miniature making. Okay. And we want to take off the teeniest little nibs of the lavender. And now I'll show you how this works. Using your white tacky glue and a toothpick we're going to work on our hand mirror. It's very simple. I'm going to use my tweezers so my hand isn't in your way. You're going to put a little dot of your white tacky glue. Turn your toothpick over using the dry side of the toothpick and pick up a piece of the purple and place it down. Then take the glue side Put a dot beside it and pick up a piece of green, push it towards it. On the other side, another dot of glue, pick up the green, and there you have a charming little floral embellishment to the back of your hand mirror. And you can get as creative as you like. I'm going to put a little bit of decoration on my powder box. I think I'll go right in the middle of this one. I've got my lavender. Do my green. green on the oops my glue wasn't quite dry there we go and look how sweet that is I do have a finished set to show you you can go with as many embellishments or keep it as simple as you like let me show you the set that I've completely embellished so you can see the possibility of what this charming technique can look like. I added a laser cut white placemat to my set and I put a charming little baby photo in the oval frame and a romantic picture of a Victorian couple in the other. And you can see I added onto my jar the corners of my picture frames. I even added the tiniest of little floral embellishment on my comb. And that way we took a very inexpensive kit and transformed it into a very beautiful quality one inch scale miniature. I want to thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the project. And please look for several of our other YouTube videos on how to craft one-inch dollhouse miniature items.